Okay, so what I've got right here uh, is a female American toad, which are really common here in North Carolina. Um, I flipped it right under a rock or a slab of something uh, right over there. And uh, American toads are one of my favorite little toads. I have two of them. <laughs> and she's jumping all over the place. Um, she's got a really cool pattern, this individual one. The color and patterns vary, but they're usually a brown with lots of warts and stuff. And actually, I didn't take too close of a look. It could be a phallus toad. Um, let me see. Okay, I believe it's a phallus toad because they have she has more warts per little section. Uh, but phallus toads are just as cool and just as common uh, in North Carolina. Uh, so toads like these are very important for a healthy ecosystem because um, they can do many different things. For example, uh, what they eat, it, like insects, and they can grab mosquitoes, uh, different insects like that that can harm people um, that spread different disease and stuff, and so it's good at keeping the population down like that. Uh, toads and frogs and other amphibians, <laughs> he's jumping a lot, are also a really good way to tell the, uh, how healthy an ecosystem is um, because toads like this cannot live in uh, dangerous uh, water with chemicals or anything. So it's a good way to see if the water is clean, if the ecosystem is safe and everything. Unfortunately, where I found the toad, which is right behind me, you can see the woods, uh, probably won't be here much longer because this is where houses are built. Um, so I very rarely take toads like this or any uh, reptile or amphibian out of their area, but because, <laughs> because she's in uh, this danger, I feel like I need to move her into a safer place. But yeah, this is a very important but also very common animal here. Um, and a very pretty looking one, especially like those eyes and different parts of it. So I'm gonna go see if there's anything else, um, and that'll be it. Okay, so for the last part of this video, I'm going to show you how you can uh, be or stay a safe and responsible herper. So right here, this is a rubber copperhead. And uh, I'm going to use this and this plank of wood to show uh, some things that you should and shouldn't do. So let's say this is right under here, like that. And I'm coming up to flip this. So see, I'm coming up over here, and so I grab it like this, and then grab, pull it up. So that's my first mistake right there. Picking the board up like I did gave the copperhead the perfect chance to bite me right there. So there's a few different ways you can do it. Uh, one way, which is probably the safest way, is to use something like a snake hook. And at this, I can go from behind and lift it and see what's under there um, without uh, being in too much danger. And then uh, once I have it up and I see what species it is, I'll do different things depending on the species. Hopefully you can hear me over all these really loud cicadas. Um, but then the next thing you do, let's say this is not a venomous snake, and I'm going to catch it. So I find it like this, and I pick it up, and then I put the board down and do whatever I'm going to do with it, like take photos and stuff. And then it's time to release the non-venomous snake. So after picking it up, um, taking photos or videos or whatever, this is a non-venomous snake. If it's a venomous, you probably just want to keep it here, maybe move the board, photograph it from a distance. But if it uh, was not, and now I'm going to release it back and put it back to where it was. So sometimes what people do is this. You have the board, you put the snake where it was, or, and then you put the board down like that. Um, so obviously that can harm the snake. So I, I'd like drop the board on it, but even if it was right there and I carefully placed it on, if it's a fragile snake or any reptile or amphibian, it could easily get hurt. So what you, you should do, uh, if it's non-venomous, something you can do is take it, put the board where it was, and then place the snake right next to it, and then it can naturally or slither back into where it wants so that it feels safe, so then it just goes down under on its own with the board already down. So you just don't want to place it directly on the animal, or even if it's not a snake, if it's a lizard, frog, toad, um, anything like that. So that was kind of the safe side on um, what you should do while herping, but it's also important to be responsible while you're doing it, uh, which that responsibility includes not harming the snake, 
but also uh, there's ecosystems kind of all over the place and ecosystems within ecosystems. Um, and so basically in this area, if there were, uh, like see the different sticks here, let's say these were like lo logs or something, and there were salamanders under them, if I move this log and don't put it back to how it was and let the salamander go back under, I basically destroyed that small ecosystem. So you can very easily destroy a lot of stuff which can make it so they don't have uh, homes or habitats and uh, it can all sorts of bad things can happen from that. So make sure everything always goes back as it is without hurting the animals um, and that's a good way to make sure you're being safe and making sure you are herping responsibly.